Good morning. Welcome to this morning's devotion. We are on Wednesday the 21st. Is it? <laughs> are you losing track of days? <laughs> Do you know what today is? I tell you what, well, I have been talking to people who thought that next weekend is Memorial Day weekend. Morning, Lisa. Uh, good morning. So I, I don't feel as bad. It's just the fact that the last Monday of the month is this Monday coming up, and it's not next Monday. Sunday is the 31st. This Monday is Memorial Day. Yes, this Monday is Memorial so Day. So everybody's thrown off by all the stuff, and Memorial Day weekend is not like the last weekend. Normally you have all the advertisements and everything. It is the last Monday, so <laughs> inter interesting, uh, interesting how it threw our schedule for a, a loop. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Good Scylla. Morning. Good morning, Lily. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Jocelyn. Good morning. Look um, forward to being with you. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, and welcome. Amen. We are... Uh, enjoying a little bit cooler morning than the nice. last couple of days nice. nice. uh, monday was kind of hot and muggy tuesday started off nice but within the time it got a little <laughs> bit muggy um randy put a little bit of watermelon rind out there the squirrels seem to be liking that but uh we are going to have our own treat today as we look into the finishing of our little series in romans chapter 12 if we can finish it um but we are going to be starting in verse 16. We left off with verse 15 yesterday. Um, so we only have to cover 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Okay. <laughs> he looks at me. Do you see that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Plus half the book of Psalms for Randy to close no, out. With. No, um, no. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day yes, that you've given us. Lord, I pray that you would bless your word, Lord, that it nourish our soul. God, I pray that you would just put these little, little pieces of your word into our hearts. God, that throughout the day, Lord, that we would chew on them, that we would, Lord, think about them. And Father, Lord, when that time comes, that your word stands as strength against a problem, I pray that your word is what we lean to. Bring to remembrance your word. Your word will not return void. Amen. It will accomplish amen, amen. what it set out to do. So, Lord, today, I pray that you would help us and anoint us to share your word, that it might be a point of strength during a time of need. I thank, thank you, Lord, Father. in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Amen. 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 It is, it is God's word that will make the difference in any given circumstance. It is God's word that will never steer you wrong. It is God's word that we build our Christianity doctrinal system on, our, our beliefs. It is the, God's word that has the teachings of Jesus in it so that we know um, what Jesus said. It, it is God's word that has instructions from Paul in it. Uh, one of the great apostles and Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. It has yeah. lessons to be learned from the past history of the children of Israel. It is God's word and it is what will change your circumstances. Amen. Change so, your life. What we're going to do is we're going to start in chapter 12 of Romans and verse number 16. And I'm going to read through the verses first. Actually, I'm going to let Randy read 16 through 21 while I check on one of the cameras real quick. Okay. It says, Be of the same mind one toward another. Live in harmony and of one accord. I'm going to have to read it straight from my Bible because there's little notes here around it and that <laughs> it's confusing me. Hold on. I'm sorry. Let's start again. 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. <laughs> she, she was reading the notes. Yeah. Okay. Not, <laughs> not the verse, but she was reading. <laughs> <laughs> Be not wise what in your own conceits. <laughs> <laughs> Recompense to, oh, well, you just want me to do that one. No, I was going to go, okay. recompense to no man, evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Go ahead and read 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. 
For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Do you see how much meat there is in those few verses? Amen. How many short snippets of saying that carry a power yes. that can be situational changing. I don't know if I'm using yeah. that word right. Well, it sounds good it can change your situation. <laughs> um, that's what God's word does. When when Jesus referred to the, the seed was like the grain of mustard seed, mm -hmm. that little seed, that little seed of word, that little, I mean, there, there are 66 books in the Bible. There are thousands of verses in the mm -hmm. Bible. There are thousands and thousands of words in the Bible. But you can take a few words out of one little seed of God's word, mm -hmm. one little piece, and it stays there. Amen. And one day when you find that you need it the most, your faith can make it yeah. pop out. Yeah. And you're like, that's, that's the verse for me today. Amen. God Amen. can not only help you to remember it, but often what I have discovered is God will start giving it to you before the circumstance happens. Yeah. You'll start thinking he will on that. start giving you this verse will come to remembrance and you'll start thinking about this, this verse and then the situation arises and you're like, you're prepared. I'm prepared <laughs> because that's what God does. God does prepare you. Yeah. It, it's it when when they talked about the the day of the Lord coming, that we won't be caught unaware. We will be prepared. We will know that Amen. it's coming. It, it is something that we we may not know the day or the hour. We not may not know that, but we can certainly tell what the season is. Um, we think, as we always say, that the situation that we're in right now, with this possibility of everybody getting chipped and everybody getting worried, that this must be the end times there's wars and there's rumors of wars and there's pestilence there has been wars and rumors of wars and pestilence since Jesus time there have been earthquakes since Jesus time yeah but not like yes there, there has been these things forever we we can't say oh it's coming your choice is you have to say yes it's I can say it's coming but I don't know the day or the hour and for us it could be today I mean, it could be today know. You don't know when that trumpet sounds and we're gone out of here. It, somebody else can have my Jeeps because I won't care at that point. Um, they can have the house. They can have my Star Wars stuff. They can have my cameras. They, this, uh, uh, I don't know about Duke, but man, you know, <laughs> I kind of want to take him with me. But uh, it, uh, you know, I was thinking when he was talking about how it'll be there when you need it. You know, we love going out on Jeep trails and stuff like that. Well. It's a beautiful ride. You look forward to it, but you know what? You prepare for the hard times. Mm -hmm. There's emergency gear that you keep on there. You have your extinguisher. You have your snap sh uh, snap rope. You have your winch. I mean, you take things in, in case. case a problem arises. Well, you hide the word of God in your heart in good times and in bad times. Mm -hmm. Because you know at some point there's going to be a pitfall that happens. There's going to be something that happens. We are in a battleground. So you hide that word. You have it prepared already in your heart so that when time comes, Amen. it's there. And here's the thing that it's talking about. It's talking about having somebody that, that is with you, that you guys are going to be together. Yes. Be of the same mind. Again, there's another Jeep illustration. When you're Jeeping with somebody else, if you get in a mess, you got somebody to pull you yeah. out. You're the prepared. <laughs> it's a buddy system. Well, if your Christianity or your life gets in a mess, your brothers and sisters in Christ are there to help you out. Amen. They are Amen. there to pull you out of the hole, to yes. take you out of the mud. Whether it takes a kinetic rope or winch or just the old fashioned lift it up, put some logs under it and push it. Everybody yeah. has different <laughs> methods. But the thing is, is that we need to be of the same mind one toward another. We need to watch each other. Yeah. We need to watch each other's backs. We need to keep each other up in prayer. It says in the second part of verse number 16, mind not high things, mm -hmm. but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. 
Don't be conceited. Don't mind high things. It's not the pursuit of wealth. It is not the pursuit of power. There is something that they call the Ofra Winfrey syndrome, which is you find the most powerful person in the room and you become their best friend. That's somebody who, who intentionally is minding something that is a higher thing, a higher power. I need, I need power. I need, I need to have respect when I, respect is earned. But Paul said, when he wrote to Romans, don't mind these things. Just let God take care of it. It comes yeah. back to that same parable where it says, oh, I'm gonna go sit in the front pew. <laughs> <laughs> and then the usher comes up and tells you, I'm sorry, that seat's reserved. And you end up sitting in the back and you're humiliated. <laughs> Whereas if you sit in the back and then the usher comes and gets you and says, hey, friend, sit in the front. This, this is, we, we would like you to sit up front. Sometimes you just end up sitting in the back because nobody comes and asks you to sit in the front. <laughs> Me, I'm a back seat kind of guy when it comes to church. I like to sit back at the back of the church and watch everything that's going on. It's just the way I am. Um, it's it just, just me. So you need to not mind the high things. Don't focus on stuff that's up, up here, out of reach. Yes, you focus toward heaven. You set your affections on things above and it's not on things thing. of this earth. Amen. That's what seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Amen. All the rest of this stuff will follow. Verse 17, recompense, pay, that, that, that word means to, to pay back, to no man evil for evil. Period. There, there's, there, there's a period after those words. That's what I'm saying. Yep. Don't pay back evil with evil. So because somebody cuts you off, we have the tendency that we want to zip past them and cut them off and hit our brakes in front of them because that's what they did to us. Well, is that really evil? No, probably not really because they may not even realize that they pulled out in front of you. They may not even think about that they're going slow. <laughs> that, that, that may not be. But sometimes people do intentionally do evil things. They lay traps for you as, as, as a Christian. They, they want to get you into trouble as a Christian. They, they don't like your Christianity. And they are waiting for you to make the smallest mistake so they can declare it to the entire world that you have flubbed up, you have messed up, you have caused a, mm -hmm. an error in your faith. And they will be more than happy to point it out. Well, we instinctively want to say, yeah, but you, you did da 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 da. Take, take your grain of salt and go on. Yeah, I've had that happen in, in my life. I had someone who falsely accused, they did it in a very sneaky way. They came up to me and said that someone said that I had done such and such and I was like, okay, well, I knew I didn't do it, but they said that I did, so it's like, okay, I need to call this in and say, okay, this accusation is being made for me so that the authorities can start searching into the situation. I don't think the person thought that I was going to actually do that. They thought that I was going to be afraid of what they said and back down. Well, and I knew the right thing to do is when something like that happens, you're supposed to call the authorities. So I did. I said, look, I'm calling about myself. Somebody accused me of this. So they, you know, did a whole research. And of course, I knew I was innocent and the, the parents and stuff knew that I was innocent. Well, to find out the person that had accused me was the one doing things. I didn't realize it till I saw in the paper that she was in jail. Yeah. So... I didn't do anything against her. I didn't come against her or anything. I let God take care of it. I mean, for a couple of weeks, I was like, I mean, are they going to come and arrest me? What, what's going to happen? I, I had no idea. Everything had changed. I mean, I had to be removed from my position. And then the investigation changed, and they realized this lady had been abusing her kids and stuff, her adopted kids. So, you see, when you let God take care of it, he takes care Amen. of it the right way. Amen. Which brings us to, you wouldn't have problems a lot of times if you would just do the last half of verse 17. Provide things honest in the sight Amen. of all men. Just give an honest day's labor for an honest day's pay. Work honestly, sell honestly, purchase honestly. Don't rip people off. Don't pip, rip off people's times. Do, do what you need to do and provide things honest in the sight of all men. Be straightforward. 
don't paint that rusted old bonded up Jeep <laughs> <laughs> and cover it and then find out that that cheap can of Rust-Oleum wears out and that there's a bunch of rust underneath it. <laughs> That's not honest. It's a, they used to say they would put like like sawdust inside the uh, engine oil so that it would run quiet and then as soon as it all wore out the engine would start knocking and breaking down and that, that's dishonest don't be don't be a, a salesman who's trying to trick people into stuff and definitely don't do that when it comes to the Lord we're not trying to trick people into accepting Amen. Jesus Amen. we're offering a legitimate method to get to heaven a way to receive salvation and forgiveness no strings attached God is giving it as a gift to you you just Amen. accept it you don't have to you don't have to pay hundred and fifty dollars to be part of the club it's a free gift salvation comes from God in verse 18 it says if it be possible as much as lieth in you obviously I understand what Paul's trying to say here if it be possible as much as lieth in you live peaceably with all men be excellent to each other, as Bill and Ted said. <laughs> Be excellent to each other. Live peaceably. Blessed is the peacemaker, because blessed is the peacemaker, for they shall inherit the earth. It's I, kingdom of God. I got distracted. We haven't heard jets flying over in a while. Uh, it's been so nice because it, I it, forgot it, that they do that. <laughs> Make a lot of Jeep videos and jets start flying over. But we need to live peaceably. That jet's not very peaceful. <laughs> if, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Doesn't say that you're not going to have wrath, but wrath has its place. Be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Be angry and sin not. These are scripture verses. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Yeah. Leave it in God's hands. Amen. If it's possible, be at peace with all people. But if there's a problem, instead of recompensing evil to evil, instead of paying back people, just let God take yeah. care of it. Amen. My prayer for is that God save them or move them. If there's somebody who's causing me grief, it's God's salvation needs to come to their home. That's the first and foremost thing I want to pray. God save them. Because I was a thorn in people's flesh. I was a pain. I was, I was that guy. It's the mercies of God. And so I'm not going to forget that God didn't stamp me out. He, I did not get stamped out. I did not get smushed. God, through his mercies and his grace, reached down into Matthew's life and did a miracle because somebody didn't recompense evil to evil to me i am thankful therefore if thine enemy <laughs> here you go not only don't do anything but leave it to the lord verse 20 says therefore if thine enemy hunger feed him if he thirsts give him a drink for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head the humiliation is what does that. Don't give them food and drink or mow the yard or be nice to people with the intent of, oh, I'm going to do this because I want to heap hot <laughs> coals on their head. No. Wrong motivation. <laughs> Just do it out of love. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. In the very last verse in Romans chapter 12, we are at 19 minutes and 39 seconds. The very last verse is how we're going to have everything repaired in our life. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. good. Amen. That is a key to living our Christianity fully repaired. Amen. Amen. Our Christianity can be repaired when we are not overcome with evil, but instead we overcome evil with good. Don't focus on the negative things. Don't focus on the catastrophe. Don't focus on everything that's evil, spiritual wickedness in high places. Don't focus on the crookedness of this and the crookedness of that and the lies and the hypocrisy. Don't focus on that stuff. Instead, bring it to the Lord and let God take care of it. And trust me, he will. 
Amen. That's the end of Romans chapter 12. And we Randy's going to close out, and I'm going to turn the cameras toward her. Do you think I have enough time to read this prayer? That's Memorial Day prayer. Why don't we save that for Memorial Day? We probably won't have time that day. <laughs> yes, we will, because it's, it's Sunday. Okay. Sunday Sunday okay. service is going to be, be special. Be praying for the gonna families. Be, we're not on such a time constraint on Sundays. Yeah, be praying for families that have lost loved ones um, in the military. Uh, I mean, this is a, a day that brings a lot of reminders. I know you think of so much of the, the parties and the get-togethers and all that, but at the same time, there's families that will be weeping. I'm thinking about their loved ones who gave their lives for this country. So as, as you go into the weekend, keep that in mind as well. I mean, this whole thing God can use to really refocus our nation on Him, His goodness, His mercy, and His grace. May the Lord bless you, give you a wonderful week, keep a praise song in your heart, and remember, oh, Matthew says I can read my little scripture. Yes, read your scripture, okay. that's one verse. Isaiah 41.10 says fear not for i am with you be not dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you yes i will help you i will uphold you with my righteous right hand isaiah 41 10. amen blessings rejoice in the lord always and again, and again I, I say, say rejoice, rejoice. <laughs> there goes my pen <laughs> blessings to all of you